here is another way to implement a queue. Um, which is a queue is a circular event. And, and before we look into the details of how this works, let me show like why would we ever do this? It's, it's certainly more complicated than just using an API. For certain types of applications, so I guess one of the most expensive things to do in a program. Um, and by expensive, I mean like time consuming from a performance perspective, um, is to make a new object. Creating a new object is, is both highly variable in terms of how much time it takes, um, and regardless, like significantly more expensive in general than any other type of operation. Um, and the reason for that has to do with the operating system and how it manages memory and all. So for certain applications, during like a high performance, near real time application, you don't want the possibility of your program failing in some way because of how long it takes to make like a new node for your request for your queue. And so instead, we could build a queue in what's called a circular array. So this is done for things like streaming a video on YouTube. Streaming a song in Spotify. Okay? Uh, those are the ones probably most famous. Um, in my previous career, we used these all the time for acquiring data from hardware devices being used by like, a scientist or an engineering expert. Where we had to read a lot of data really quickly. And if, if we had to go get a new object or grab some new computer memory, the time it would take for that to happen, we would have missed our data. And we would have What's cool about this approach is we have all of the objects we need, all of the elements, up front. Okay? So we allocate an array, and we decide what we do on it. We make it big enough so that we don't think we're ever going to like run out of data. That's not to say, but what's cool about this is we're going to reuse the elements in these arrays over and over. So the array starts off basically empty. Uh, and you start adding to um, I'm sorry, you start with the you start adding to the tip. And so at some point, here's our array, here's index zero. We keep track of what index is ahead at and what index is ahead. Okay? So the head is here and the tail is here. What that means is if we need to add a new element, like a new bunch of music that comes over from Spotify. We add it here. And if it's time to like play a new bunch of music from that kind of creative buffer, you want to be referring to this as a buffer, um, as you're listening to the music, we remove it from the head. And then the head will move to the index of the head and move to So here the head and the tail is keep moving throughout this array. Eventually we get to a point where we add another element down here for the and now we've hit the end of this array. But that's not a problem because the next element we add will wrap around and be added back at index zero. As long as the tail never touches the head, we're fine. It doesn't keep moving and the tail will keep facing the head when we have enough room. If the tail does touch um, we call that, so we used to call that a buffer overflow. Too much data in the buffer, okay? We're not reading data out of the queue fast enough. Data was in the queue fast enough, okay? That didn't really happen in the queue, right? It just stopped asking Spotify for more data and things like that. But more of like in the experiment situation where you're acquiring data in certain ways. What we tend to run into more when you're streaming from Spotify or watching an Netflix video. A buffer underflow error. A buffer underflow error is where the head touches the tail and there's no more elements in the queue. Okay? That's the buffer underflow. That happens when well, if your internet connection is really slow and you're using your plane faster than you're streaming your data from Spotify or your real plane or whatever. So it's not like this solves all the problems. You can still have buffer overflow and underflow. But 
What? Or what? Is there something buzzing? I think I kind of hear something. Yeah. I have a little bit of a hearing loss, especially at high frequencies. So. All right. You can close the door, though. That's fine. All right, let's take a look at the code. So let's open up this circular array Q file. And let's talk through the data that we, the, the instance variables we need. And we'll keep consulting to the picture. So we definitely need an array of objects. That's going to be the fixed array. Okay. Um, we are also going to need to keep track of the head the index of where the head is, the index of where the tail is, and we need to keep track of the current size, that is how many elements are currently in our queue. So let's add those. So let's add an index for the head, that's just an int. Let's add an index for the tail, that's just an int. And let's add the current size of the queue. How many elements are in the queue? We could calculate that by finding the difference between the head and the tail. However, we need to distinguish the case of the queue is empty and we just had a buffer um, overflow and the queue is entirely full. In both cases, head and tail are the same. Um, so that's why we have this current size piece. All right, so let's write some of these methods. Let's start with the constructor, default constructor. It constructs an empty queue. So make our constructor public. The way we're going to write this queue, um, and this is doesn't quite fit the high performance application, but it's, it's kind of an interesting approach, is we're going to make our queue an initial size. And if we do get a buffer overflow, like we run out of room in the queue for elements, this queue is automatically going to double its size. So this behaves like the Java ArrayList class actually behaves. In a real-time situation, that would like kill your performance and you'd have an error of some sort. But for other cases, it's just fine. So let's do that. So let's create a constant. So final int initial size. Let's just start with five elements because it'll make it easy to test. And then let's initialize all our other instance variables. So this dot elements equals new object. So a new array of objects of size initial size. Head is going to be set to index zero. Tail, which is the index where we're next going to add an element, is also index zero because our queue is empty. So this dot current size equals zero. Our queue is empty. There we go. That gets everything started. All right, some of these methods are easier than others. Checks whether this queue is empty. That's the empty method. So public Boolean empty return this.currentSize equals zero. If the current size is zero, return true, else return false. Here's a tip. 
I often use a comparison operator in my return statement. Um, and that's something that's fairly common that you'll see. I appreciate that that can sometimes be confusing to decide when it returns true and false. You can always write an if else statement again and say return true, return false. Okay? Your code will be just as fast if you write it that way. And I don't care if it's four lines instead of one. All right? So don't feel that you have to use conditional expressions with the return statement. All right, next, adds an element to the tail of the queue. So let's look at our picture. The index of the tail is always where the new element is going to go. So we can insert it here. We'll have to move the tail accordingly, and we'll have to update the size of the queue. So we have several things to do, but it's not too bad. So public void add of type object, new, let's call it new element. Because we are making our circular array growable, before we add an element, let's check if it needs to grow. So I've already written this method down here called grow if necessary, and you can read through it if you're, if you're interested, but we're just gonna invoke it at the start of the add method. And that way we've, we've decomposed that functionality. If the buffer needs, if the array needs to grow, great, it's gonna grow. If not, fine. All right, so we're adding a new element. That means that current size is gonna be incremented by one. That means this.elements, that's our array. And at the index of the tail, we're gonna assign that to new element. And then we will increment the index for the tail. We have to handle a certain condition here. When we increment the index of the tail, it's fine in this first example, but when tail is the last index in the array and we increment it past the end of the array, that's not what we want. We want tail to wrap around and go to zero. So we have to either check that condition or otherwise ensure that the index of tail is always within the array. Here's how I usually do it for this type of an application. I say this.tail mod equals, I use the mod operator, and I mod it by this.elements.length. So let's say my array has 10 elements. That means the valid indices are zero to nine. So if tail has a value between zero to nine, and I do tail mod 10, I'm still gonna get zero to nine back, nothing's gonna change. But when tail does get pushed to 10, 10 mod 10 is zero, that's gonna set tail back to zero. So we often use the mod operator for this type of wraparound situation, okay? We could have written it as a conditional. I could have said if this.tail equals this.elements.length, this.tail equals zero. Totally valid to write it that way as well. This approach I just think you're going to see in other places too. All right, let's remove an element. Public object remove. So this always removes it from the head of the list because we're implementing a queue. We do need to check if the queue is empty, so we'll do that first. If this.empty, throw no, oops, no such element exception, just like we usually do. Otherwise, the element we're gonna return, which we'll store in this local variable element, is this.elements at the index of this.head.
Now we also have to increase the index now of head because we just removed the element at the head of the queue. Here's another way that, I'm just trying to show you things that I think you're gonna see in other contexts. Here's another way that we often handle the wraparound as well. We'd say something like this.head equals this.head plus one mod this.elements.length. So we kind of add one to it and then do the mod operator all together. And that lets head smoothly wrap around back to index zero. Let's subtract one from current size and return the element. Yeah, Josh? All right, let's try this out. And I, I think I might have forgotten to do the code again. Let's see. Oops. I did. I don't know why I didn't update this right. All right, I will upload this to GitHub if you don't feel like typing this in. And I'm going to make a note to fix this in the future. Sorry about that. All right. So all this test code does is I'm queuing up Tom, Diana, Harry, removing Tom, adding Romeo, removing Diana, adding Juliet, adding Maria, at which point I will have like, oh, and then just emptying everything out. So let's just run it. Make sure it behaves the way we expect. Oh. Oh, extra bracket. Tom, Diana, Harry. Wait. Oh yeah, remove Tom, remove Diana, Harry, Romeo, Juliet, Maria. Oh, yeah. 